Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number six on using your BeagleBone Black microcontroller. Uh, if you were with us in lesson number five, we showed you how you could do digital writes to the GPIO pins from inside of Python. So we were able to use the things that we learned in earlier lessons. We were able to use the Linux that we learned and the Python that we learned, and we were able to begin to control the pins on the BeagleBone Black using digital writes. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to do analog writes, or at least simulate analog writes using pulse width modulation. And the way pulse width modulation works Works is still something like the BeagleBone Black or most of these microcontrollers can only really put out a digital signal on or off, 3.3 volts or 0 volts. But we sort of simulate an analog output by turning that voltage on and off really quickly and depending on what fraction of the time it's on versus what fraction of the time it's off that signal will act for many applications like an analog signal. So let's say that we had a 50 Hertz signal and we're applying uh, we're, we're applying a 3.3 uh, volt pulse train it, the 3.3 volts is on half the time and off half the time. On half the time, off half the time. That would act like a 1.65 volt uh, signal for many applications. If we had it on 1% of the time, it would act like a 0.01 times 3.3 volts. If we had it on 99% of the time and off 1% of the time, that would act like 0.99 of 3.3 volts. And that actually works for a lot of applications. So what we're going to learn today is how to apply this pulse width modulation to the BeagleBone Black <coughs> using Python. First thing that you need to do is you need to go back and review the pin diagram of the BeagleBone Black, which I have shown here. To get there, you can go to toptechboy.com. I'll just take you to it really quick, toptechboy.com, my most excellent website. Go to the BeagleBone Black Lessons. Once you get to BeagleBone Black, you will want to go down to BeagleBone Black Lesson number one. And then you will find your own most excellent copy of this uh, pinout. I would recommend you think about going ahead and printing this out and putting it up on your wall uh, nearby your uh, work area because it's very handy to be able to see what pins you can use for what. For the digital output, digital writes, you could use any of these green pins, but there's special pins that are set up for the pulse width modulation and those are the purple pins. Okay, so if we are going to use uh, if we're going to use uh, pulse width modulation, we need to pick one of these purple pins. I think today, just for fun, we are going to use pin 13 on header P8. And in fact, I am going to go ahead and you can see that I have my uh, digital voltmeter here. I'm going to go ahead and hook my digital voltmeter up to this. I'm going to hook the ground to this ground pin up here, which is on the header 8, is the pin 2, which is the first row the second column, the outside column. Okay, there I am. You're going to have trouble seeing me actually put this in, but it's going to be the easiest one would be pin 13. So I just kind of count across. This is pin 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Now I'm going to check that real co closely over here because it's very easy to miscount. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. And usually when something doesn't work, there is a most excellent chance that you have plugged into the wrong, uh, plugged into the wrong pin. So we've got the DVM plugged in there. So now I believe we are ready to fire up our Python and start writing code. If you've been following along with me, let's see, where am I? I am in my uh, root directory. That's just the default logon, root. If I look ls, you can see that I created a folder called MyPython that I do my work in with Python. I'm going to change directory down into that. If you don't have one of those, you can do it with an mkdir and then space my underscore Python. But I'm going to change, I'm going to go there, okay, ls can see the programs that we wrote in our earlier lessons. But we're, what we are going to do now is nano, and we will just call this pwm.py. 
Okay, boom, we are ready to go. First thing we're going to need to do is import the most excellent Adafruit library. Import Adafruit. You have to do it exactly like I'm showing you here. B -P, uh, B -B -I -O P W M. The uppercase, lowercase matters. You've got to do it exactly the way I'm showing you as PWM. If you have the recent uh, versions of the BeagleBone Black, RevC, the Debian uh, operating system, uh, Wheezy 7, comes with this library. Okay, If you get an error when you try to run this and you have typed it in exactly right, you need to go in and pro uh, make Make sure that you're on Debian uh, uh, Wheezy 7. If you're on Debian, you could probably do a uh, apt, or you could do a uh, update, and then you could do an upgrade. And so upgrade to the latest operating system, and it will probably put this in for you. Or you can look about how to download it. But I'm not going to go through that, because I think if you just keep your operating system updated, upgraded, you should have that on there. OK, now what we need to do is we need to assign a pin. So I'm going to say my my PWM is equal to, we've got to go back and look at that and make sure that we get this right. It's going to be P8 underscore 13. P8 header P8 underscore 13 and that's in quotes. It's going to be uppercase P8 underscore 13 like that. Now I don't have to keep going back and trying to remember which pin I'm using, I just remember that that is my PWM. Now what we need to do now is we need to start up the PWM. So we're going to do PWM dot start. Okay, where do we want to do it? On which pin? My PWM pin. And now we set a frequency, okay, or the frequency is going to be uh, already mm, let's see let's set a let's let's set a frequency what we're going to do is we are going to set a frequency uh, and we're going to set a frequency of uh, a thousand Hertz I'm going to use a thousand Hertz and so I think I will start with a the first thing we put in here is the duty cycle. I'll put in a duty cycle. This is in percent, so I'll put in a 0% duty cycle. So what is that going to do? That will start things out with it off because you have a 0% duty cycle, which means that would correspond to 0 times 3.3, and that would act like a 0 volt signal because it is off all the time. So I'm going to do that. Let's use 1,000 hertz because that's pretty quick. That goes real fast, and it does a, it does a good job. Okay, and I think that should do it. PWM dot start my PWM, and then this is the original duty cycle, and this is the original. Uh, this is the original frequency. Okay, let's get a let's get a uh, input from the user, and I'm going to say it's DC for duty cycle is equal to input from the user, and then what duty cycle would you like? Okay, like that. So uh, what that will do is that will ask the user what duty cycle would you like, and then it would put it in the variable DC. So hopefully that makes sense there. Okay, now what we are going to do is we are going to do a, let's just do a, a, let's do a for loop. Uh, I like to do a for loop and that way uh, it'll do, I can have it do a cleanup. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So we're going to do four. Let's, we'll, we'll put in here five, uh, four I in range. We'll loop through it five times. Okay, so we would go from zero to five, colon. This starts at zero and it goes up to but doesn't include five. So that means it'll do it five times. Zero, one, two, three, four. 
Okay, it's a crazy way to count, but that's how we do things in programming. A lot of times we start at zero and then we stop one before the end. That's just the way Python works. And then don't forget your semicolon there indicating that the for loop will be henceforth coming. And then we indicate the for loop with indentation. Your indentation has to be perfect. It, it doesn't matter how much you indent. I just hit tab, but it's all got to be lined up down here. Okay, so let's... Uh, I guess, I'm sorry, we had better put this, I should have put this inside of the loop because you're going to ask every time for it. So I'm going to uh, copy and then I'm going to get rid of that. I wasn't thinking that we need to put that inside the loop because every time through we need to ask for it. So now I will paste it in here. Okay, so now I have an input called DC. So how do I put that on my uh, PWM? Well, what I would do is PWM dot set underscore duty underscore cycle. Where do I want to set the duty cycle on my PWM? Because we might have more than one pin going here, so I want to put it on my PWM. And then what do I want to set the duty cycle to? Well, I want to set it to duty cycle DC. So we get the duty cycle from the user, and then we apply that, and then we should be able to see it over here. Okay, so let's uh, see what else do we need to do. We would need to uh, stop it when we're done, so we would do a PWM stop. And where do we want to stop? We want to stop uh, my PWM. See, we want to clean up after ourselves, so we're going to stop the PWM, we're going to turn it off, and then we're going to do pwm.clean up like that. And so that should clean things up. How do we save the program? Control O to write out. It shows us the file name and then we click enter and then we do a control X and we are out of there. So let's do an LS. We should see it. There it is, PWM Pi. Let me see if I can bring my voltmeter to life. Okay, it's sitting there probably reading nothing, which makes sense. So let's see if we can run that program. So we're going to see, say Python, and then we're going to go pwm.py. I don't have to put a path name because I am down in the folder. And if you go into the folder, then you don't have to put your path names in there. So let's see what happens. What duty cycle would you like? I would like zero. If I have a 0% duty cycle, that means it's on for 0% of the time, which means that should continue to read zero. Okay, which it does. What duty cycle would you like? Well, what if I turn it to 100%? I hate how I did not put a space after like. We will fix that in a minute. Uh, what duty cycle would you like? I would like 100%. And then let's see, 100%, look at that, we get the 3.36 uh, volts that we would expect. If the signal's on all the time, 100% of the time, it looks like 3.36 volts. This is the biggie. What if we say we want a duty cycle of 50%? That should be half of 3.36, which is a most perfect 1.68 volts. So you see, even the voltmeter thinks that this pulse width modulation is a DC signal of 1.68 volts. What if we did 10%? 10% of 0.3.3 should be about 0.33. Boom! Look at that, 0.33, just like we expected. What if we said 1%? That would be like 0.0 or something. I don't even know if we can read that. Okay, 1% is getting down lower than what I can read there. What if we try 5? Ooh, I, I got to run it again. But before I run it again, I'm going to go fix that, that formatting problem. Be neat. Get your formatting right. Okay, let's do that. Do you see when I came in and I said, uh, what duty cycle would you like? I need to put a space there. And in fact, I could do it like that or a question mark, and then a space. Control O, Enter, Control X. Okay, this time when I run it, I shouldn't get an error because I did those cleanup commands and it frees up those pins and so you can run it again and you won't get errors. So let's look, Python pwm.py. What duty cycle would you like? What if I did 5%? Let's see if you can see that. Okay, 0.16. So it's seeing that. What if I do 2%? 
I'm going to try it again. Let's see if we can see 1% signal. 0.03. <laughs> okay, so what is really neat here, we're able to see just really, really precise control of a simulated analog output using PWM. Let's go to 90%. Let's crank it up to 90%. And you can see 3.02. Okay, I'm going to go to 100%. And I'm going to write this down. Notice, ooh, for you know, for some reason, ah, I know why. It takes that and then it drops out. For some reason, it's not working on the last one. Um, it has to do with how my for loop is working because it goes in and it shuts it down. As soon as it sets it, it drops out of the for loop and then it it it, it shuts it down. So let's edit this. Okay, so do you see on the on the last time through it sets the duty cycle and then immediately it turns it off and that's why on that fifth one I'm getting something that doesn't work so well. Okay, so let me come down here and what was it that I was going to do? Oh, uh, let me let me. Uh, I believe it was three point three six five. 3.365. So what if I just wanted to get a voltage instead of inputting a duty cycle? What if I said uh, what voltage would you like? Okay. Well, how would I convert voltage uh, to duty cycle? And so what I would say is this is, I'm going to input now here instead of DC, I'm going to input V, their desired voltage. Well, somehow I'm going to have to convert voltage to duty cycle. Well, what do I know? Voltage is equal to 3.365 times the duty cycle. And so if I divide both sides by 3.365, duty cycle is equal to V divided by 3.365. So let's try that. If I do my math right, duty cycle is equal to V divided by 3.365, I believe. Okay. And then <coughs> what you uh, probably need to do is you just got to make sure that somehow you don't have some goofy round off error here that would give a DC greater than 100. So you would say if uh, DC if DC is greater than 100 then and then you got to tab in DC equals 100. And this will also, like if a person puts in more than 3.365 volts, it'll limit them to that uh, that range. And so you don't end up crashing the program because you're putting in a DC greater than a DC greater than 100. Okay, so let's do a control X. Uh, yeah, let me look at that. That looks good. So we're going to do a control O, enter, control X. Now let's see what happens when we try to run it. Let's see if it's going to run. What voltage would I like? I would like one volt. Okay, so I put in one. And we did not have that work right. So let me go in and ah, I bet I know what I did. Control D. Control D will get you out of that. Okay. <clears throat> this is V divided by that. That would be the fraction. That's the fraction, but I wanted a percentage, so what do I multiply by? Times 100. Ha, I bet this is going to work. Run it. Okay, what voltage would I like? I'm going to try for one volt. Is it going to work? Ha! Look at that. Right to the, to the one thousandth of a volt, to the millivolt we've got that. What if we say 1.35? Look at that, 1.35, just right about as close as you can get. <coughs> that is just what, between 1.35 and 1.4, uh, 1.349, and so that is just perfect. What if I want 0 0.005? Let's say if I wanted 5 millivolts. This is probably not going to work, but we will try it anyway and just see what happens. Look at that, 5 millivolts. <laughs> two millivolts. 
0.002, 2 millivolts. Boom. That is amazing. Okay, I'm going to enter out because remember that last one doesn't, uh, doesn't work. Let's just see. Uh, let's see. There's another thing that we can do uh, that I will just show you. Uh, and that is, let's go back to our program, nanopwn.py. Okay, we can change the frequency. You see how we set the frequency here? Okay, we set the frequency there, and then the frequency stays the same, but we're just, it, the, the frequency stays the same, the period stays the same, but we're changing the ratio of time that the signal is on. You can actually change the frequency if you wanted to after you gave that command, and the way you would do that if you wanted to change the frequency, you would do it this way. You could do pwm.set underscore frequency 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 and then what's your pin well it's my pwm and then change the frequency to uh, let's say 100 Hertz okay I can't really think of a reason to change the frequency right now because with PWM something like a thousand just works great if I change the frequency it's not going to change the results because it's still averaging uh, you know based on the duty cycle so changing the frequency doesn't really affect uh, uh, the the PWM in any real way but if you had other applications where you wanted to have a signal and you wanted to to change the frequency and keep the duty cycle the same you could do it with PWM dot uh, set frequency okay I think this is just really really exciting the things to keep in mind is you've got to keep in mind that on your uh, on your Beagle Bone Black, it is the purple pins that you can do this with. The red pins you need to limit to your digital outs, and the purple pins you can do the PWM. Okay, this has been a great lesson. We've learned a lot today. We've got a new tool in our toolbox as far as doing uh, good things with the Beagle Bone Black, and we will be back shortly with uh, lesson number seven, where we'll probably hook this up to a circuit and sort of show you how to use uh, PWM in a real circuit. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. We will talk to you guys later.